Across the Firth of Tay from St Andrews is the championship course that many regard as the most difficult in Scotland, Carnoustie. It has been described as a monster, especially when the wind blows and the rough is up. That's Sergio Garcia. He found that out in the 1999 Open. Right from your very first tee shot, it's game on. It takes nothing less than your best golf to make a birdie here. The course is sometimes called <laughs> Car Nasty, though this may be in reference to the cold wind and rain that sweeps in across the North Sea. Tommy Armour, Henry Cotton, Gary Player, Tom Watson have all won Opens here, but for most people, Canoustie is synonymous with Ben Hogan. He only entered the championship once, but his intense preparation was so legendary that it was no surprise that the wee Iceman won the title in 1953. On the sixth hole, he threaded his drive so accurately on all four days between the out of bounds on the left and the first bunker that today the hole is aptly named Hogan's Alley. The tenth hole at Canoustie is infamous too, but not because it was touched by golfing greatness. It's called South America, and this is how it got its name. One night, a local lad who had had one too many proclaimed that he was embarking on a great adventure to South America, but he didn't get far. When he woke up the next day, he'd only made it as far as the 10th green. Well, the 10th might not take you to South America, but it will take you to the Tea Hut, arguably Scotland's greatest halfway house. It said a stop here is optional, but believe me, it's mandatory. At the Tea Hut, you'll always be welcomed with a friendly smile as you enjoy much needed refreshment. And you're invited to leave your bag tag on the wall for a little slice of immortality. Refreshed after your visit, you're ready for an even greater golfing challenge over the last eight holes. Soon, you'll come to the 14th and the famous Spectacles Bunkers. Even 2020 vision won't help you see the green here. Club selection indeed is critical. On the other side, 150 foot putts await those unfortunate souls who've chosen incorrectly. The 17th is even scarier. The Barry Burn forms a veritable island fairway with all its twists and turns. Get past the burn and the treachery continues with numerous greenside bunkers. And finally, there's the story of Jean van der Velde and his adventures on the 18th in the 1999 Open. Needing only a double bogey to win, he fatefully pulled out his driver, attacked the hole, and the rest is history. He lost. You'll do well, though, to avoid Jean's fate in the Ballybun. There's simply no room for error. There is more than one course at Canoustie. In addition to the championship course, there's the Burnside, which was also used in the 1953 Open when everyone had to pre-qualify. It's another challenging layout and well-named for the Barry Burn plays an integral role in its design. Canoustie has a third course too, the Budden Lynx, which is the closest of the three to the sea. Together, the courses make Canoustie a world-class golfing destination, so give yourself plenty of time to enjoy it. The Canoustie Golf Course Hotel was built for the 1999 Open and is one of Scotland's finest. Home of the world's largest Rolex, it's an integral part of the experience here, a la Turnbury. Many of the excellent rooms offer views of the course, and suites are named after Canoustie's Open champions. The centerpiece being, not surprisingly, the Hogan Suite, available for private group dining. Downstairs is a world-class spa with massage treatments and a superb indoor pool facility. The dining is excellent, and the bar perfect for Canoustie. You're guaranteed to be well looked after when you stay at the Canoustie Golf Course Hotel. Across the street from the hotel are two local golf clubs, the Caledonia Golf Club with its distinctive clubhouse and the Carnoustie Golf Club established way back in 1842. If you play at Carnoustie, you're welcome to visit the clubs for the day and it's a great way to meet the locals and hear stories of how so many golfers from Carnoustie a century ago helped to popularize the game in America.